Susan by Jane Austen. Seven, Lady Susan to Mrs. Johnson, Churchill. My dear Alicia, you are very good in taking notice of Frederica, and I am grateful for it as a mark of your friendship. But as I cannot have a doubt of the warmth of that friendship. I am far from exacting so heavy a sacrifice. She is a stupid girl and has nothing to recommend her. I would not therefore on any account have you encumber one moment of your precious time by sending her to Edward Street especially as every visit is so many hours deducted from the grand affair of education, which I really wish to be attended to while she remains with Miss Summers. I want her to play and sing with some portion of taste and a good deal of assurance, as she has my hand and arm and a tolerable voice. I was so much indulged in my infant years that I was never obliged to attend to anything, and consequently, am without those accomplishments which are necessary to finish a pretty woman. Not that I am an advocate for the prevailing fashion of acquiring a perfect knowledge in all the languages, arts, and sciences. It is throwing time away to be mistress of French. Italian, German, music, singing, drawing, etc. will gain a woman some applause, but will not add one lover to her list. Grace and manner, after all, are of the greatest importance. I do not mean, therefore, that Frederica's acquirements should be more than superficial, and I flatter myself that she will not remain long enough at school to understand anything thoroughly. I hope to see her the wife of Sir James within a twelvemonth. You know on what I ground my hope, and it is certainly a good foundation, for school must be very humiliating to a girl of Frederica's age. And by the by, you had better not invite her any more on that account, as I wish her to find her situation as unpleasant as possible. I am sure of Sir James at any time, 
and could make him renew his application by a lie. I shall trouble you, meanwhile, to prevent his forming any other attachment when he comes to town. Ask him to your house occasionally, and talk to him about Frederica, that he may not forget her. Upon the whole, I commend my own conduct in this affair extremely, and regard it as a very happy mixture of circumspection and tenderness. Some mothers would have insisted on their daughters accepting so great an offer on the first overture, but I could not answer it to myself to force Frederica into a marriage from which her heart revolted, and instead of adopting so harsh a nature merely proposed to make it her own choice by rendering her life thoroughly uncomfortable till she does accept him. But enough of this tiresome girl. You may well wonder how I contrive to pass my time here, and for the first week it is most, it was most insurably insufferably dull. Now, however, we begin to mend. Her party is enlarged by Mrs. Vernon's brother, a handsome young man, who pros promises me some amusement. There is something about him that rather interests me, a sort of sauciness or familiarity, which I shall teach him to correct. He is lively and seems clever, and when I have inspired him with greater respect for me than his sisters, kind offices have implanted, he may be an agreeable float. There is ex exquisite pleasure in subduing an insolent spirit and making a person predetermined to dislike, acknowledge one's superiority. I have disconcerted him already by my calm reserve, and it shall be my endeavor to humble the pride of these self-important de Courcy's still lower, to convince Mrs. Vernon that her sisterly cautions have been bestowed in vain, and to persuade Reginald that she has scandalously belied me. This project will serve at least to amuse me and prevent my feelings so acutely this dreadful separation from you and all whom I love. Adieu, yours ever, S. Vernon. Letter 8. Mrs. Vernon to Lady de Courcy. Churchill. My dear mother, you must not expect Reginald back again for some time. He desires me to tell you that the present open weather induces him to accept Mr. Vernon's invitation to prolong his stay in Sussex, that they may have some hunting together. He means to send for his horses immediately, and it is impossible to say when you may see him in Kent. I will not disguise my sentiments on this change from you, my dear madam, though I think you had better not communicate them to my father, whose excessive anxiety about Reginald.
astronaut would subject him to an alarm which might seriously affect his health and spirits. Lady Susan has certainly contrived in the seriously of uh, in the seri in in the space of, of a fortnight to make my brother like her. In short, I am persuaded that his continuing here beyond the time originally fixed for his return is occasioned as much by a degree of fascination towards her as by the wish of hunting with Mr. Vernon, and, of course, I cannot receive that pleasure from the length of his visit, which my brother's company would otherwise give me. I am indeed provoked at the artifice of this unprincipled woman, what stronger proof of her dangerous abilities can be given than this perversion of Reginald's judgment, which, when he entered the house, was so decidedly against her? In his last letter, he actually gave me some particulars of her behaviors at Langford such as he received from a gentleman who knew her perfectly well, which, if true, must raise abhorrence against her, and which Reginald himself was entirely disposed to credit. His opinion of her, I am sure, was as low as of any woman in England, and when he first came, it was evident that he considered her as one entitled neither to delicacy nor respect, and that he felt she would be delighted with the attentions of any man inclined to flirt with her. Her behavior, I confess, has been calculated to do away with such an idea, I have not detected the smallest impropriety in it, nothing in vanity, of pretension, of levity, and she is altogether so attractive that I should not wonder at his being delighted with her, had he known nothing of her previous to this personal acquaintance, but against reason, against conviction, to be so well pleased with her, as I am sure he is, does really astonish me. His admiration was at first very strong, but no more than was natural, and I did not wonder at his being struck by the gentleness and delicacy of her manners, but when he has mentioned her of late, it has been in terms of more extraordinary praise, and yesterday he actually said that he could not be surprised at any effect produced on the heart of man by such loveliness and such abilities. And when I lamented in reply the badness of her disposition, he observed that whatever might have been her errors, they were to be imputed to her neglected education and early marriage, and that she was altogether a wonderful woman. This tendency to excuse her conduct, or to forget it in the warmth of admiration, vexes me, and if I did not know that Reginald is too much at home at Churchill to need an invitation for lengthening his visit, 
as she regret Mr. Vernon's giving him any. Lady Susan's intentions are, of course, those of absolute coquetry or a desire of universal admiration. I cannot for a moment imagine that she has anything more serious in view, but it mortifies me to see a young man of Reginald's sense duped by her at all. I am. Catherine Vernon. Okay, letter nine is pretty short. All right, letter nine. Mrs. Johnson to Lady Susan, Edward Street. My dear friend, I congratulate you on Mr. De Courcy's arrival and advise you by all means to marry him. His father's estate is, we know, consider considerable, and I believe certainly entailed. Sir Reginald is very infirm and not likely to stand in your way long. I hear the young man well spoken of, and though no one can really deserve you, my dear Susan, Mr. De Courcy may be worth having. Manwaring will storm, of course, but you may easily pacify him. Besides, the most scrupulous point of honor could not require you to wait for his emancipation. I have seen Sir James. He came to town for a few days last week and called several times in Edward Street. I talked to him about you and your daughter, and he is so far from having forgotten you that I am sure he would marry either of you with pleasure. I gave him hopes of Frederica's relenting and told him a great deal of her improvements. I scolded him for making love to Maria Manwary. He protested that he had been only in joke, and we both laughed heartily at her disappointment, and in short, were very agreeable. He is as silly as ever. Yours faithfully, Alicia. We'll continue 